Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Paint. Potentially the uh, finale. You would know. Seeing the thumbnail, seeing the title. But right now, I don't know. I'm pretty sure this will be the finale. We're doing all this. Took a little break. Had a little fun. Basically, we got down tonight. Yeah. Yeah. And I honestly cannot remember what the hell we were talking about in the last episode. So, we're basically going to try, we're going to try to stay on topic with Fallout. So, for those of you who are huge fans of Fallout and know all the lore and whatnot, that is awesome. Also, cut a guy a break. Because I'm still new. I'm still getting to know everything. You know. Uh, but what I know. I'm liking. So. That's always a good thing. It's a good sign. I'm not sure if that part is supposed to be a part of that model. This little. This little thing that's sticking out there. Going chick. From the blade. But I didn't bother trimming it off. So we're acting like it's part of it. The base is pretty much dry though. So that's a good sign. Also just means we've probably been here long enough. And there is a part of this model that I forgot to paint. And it's right there on his, uh, on his arm. I forgot to paint that black. And having this little metal piece right here will help differentiate between the two, between his main big shoulder piece here and that smaller one. Ooh, I'm sorry. So, how's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. Really? No way. Man, shut up. Get out of here. Look. You can tell me all kinds of stuff, but you can't be telling me a bunch of malarkey. All right? I'm not going to stand for it. I also can't fact check you. So we're all of a sudden going to flip the script, and we're going to go, Dude, really? That's awesome. No way. All right. All right. I get it. You're awesome. You're a legend. I get it. I get it. You can stop gloating. I'm not here to revel in your badassery. I'm only here to be your friend. If you want someone to revel in your badassery, you need to go find yourself a different type of friend. Okay there, friend. Okay there, friend. So, other than that nonsense... Well, isn't that annoying? My finger slipped, so the ma the model got hit with some silver. Very annoying. Very annoying. But it is what it is. I should be using the very fine brush that I had. And I just realized that I did say we were going to try to focus on the game... And here we are, not talking about the game whatsoever. So let's remedy that. I am playing Fallout 4. That is what I have. I'm basically a Fallout version. <clears throat> so I do politely uh, ask that no one spoil anything. Because I really don't know what's about to happen. I mean, I kind of, I kind of know... Fallout 4 was spoiled just a little bit for me. Um, was, I, I was watching a video, and this is a little while back now, that um, uh, it was like, what were the experiments in all of the vaults? 
And of course, Vault 111 came up and they kind of spoiled what happened. Uh, what the kind of what the experiment was, I don't really remember now what the exact experiment was. But, uh, you know, what happens. Uh, I'm trying to be vague enough for those who have not played it and don't want to know. Or maybe they somebody just doesn't care and only wants to watch the painting. Which, by all means, I hope I hope people have been painting along with me, you know, painting something. I mean, I used to say, you know, never paint alone. Always use the buddy system. Kind of like a play on, well, any of, any of the things we were taught as children. You know, don't walk out there alone. Use the buddy system. You know, stay safe. You are safer in numbers. And so, yeah, we're, we're doing it. We're living it. We're going to paint this part dark iron or that rough iron because it will be a subtle, very subtle change. But I believe you will be able to notice it. It's just a little salty there on the end. Probably paint that barrel here in a second. I'm just kind of looking over any of the pieces, any of the any of the little things that we might have missed, which we're going to remedy. Um, I don't know how long this episode will be. I'm hoping it is the finale. No, not that I'm hoping for a short series or anything, because usually they're about they're about four episodes, so it takes about a month to get through. Which, if if that's bothering anybody, I do apologize for that, man. I mean, I can't upload every day. I just can't. I would like to, but I can't. But anyway, Fallout, right? <clears throat> um, very much like in the lore. Very much like in the atmosphere, the tone. Um, <clears throat> got my first taste of the Brotherhood of Steel. Very interesting. And I didn't bother looking it up, but I could, I swear that's George Clooney. As, uh, as the paladin, I can't even remember his name now. It's been a couple weeks since I've been able to play, and I, I'm bound to forget certain things. Which is a shame. I don't like forgetting any of the stuff about it, because, um, well, you know, I forgot. And the game is, the game is great, the lore is great, and it's not stuff that really... is worthy of being forgotten. So I've been trying, I've been really trying to uh, remember certain things, but I mean, I sometimes you just can't help it. You forget. Man. But I did create a character, and uh, you can see his ridiculousness. Uh, so my lone survivor, as that protagonist is called, uh, I named him Shepard after, after uh, Commander Shepard, of course. Isn't he beautiful? Good Lord. <laughs> Don't judge me too harshly, okay? I had a, I had a fun time making that. Uh, it was a little difficult to, to make that, honestly. I mean, some of the face choices, I was like, dude. Um, what, how do I, how do I do this? Uh, we are going to go with barbarian flesh as usual for, uh, his flesh tones. I like barbarian flesh a lot. Yeah. I know you guys see me use it a lot. I use it a lot for like, uh, of course the flesh, but I also use it for, uh, edge highlighting on leathers. 
which for this we might use. Uh, I, again, I forgot about that shoulder. I hope I don't forget again. I could just stop right now and do it, but I'm, I'm not because, you know, we're focusing. But anyway, we were focusing so much that I already forgot what I was saying. Oh, the dry brushing or the edge highlighting. I'm not sure what color we're going to go with right now, but it's okay. Um, as far as companions, uh, I believe there wasn't much of a choice to have that reporter lady as your companion. I'm not too sure how I feel about her. I don't like reporters as it is in, uh, you know, your stereotypical, uh, journalistic reporter because, you know, they're there for a story and they're going to get that story no matter what. Even if they have to, you know, be bad people, twist truths and things like that. I'm not saying all reporters are like that. If you're a reporter and you're watching this, I mean, good on you. I hope you like your job. And that's it. <laughs> I have nothing against you. I don't really care. Um, can, can I get that off? Maybe. Maybe. Bah. Bastard. Anyway, um, but I got rid of her. You son of a bitch. Look at that. Ain't that some shit? I had to be very careful when I was gluing this because the pieces are so small. And uh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Give me one second to run over there and get my glue. Uh, we will try to fix this on camera. And we got two glue options. I will say that again in case you didn't hear me over there. We have two glue options. Excuse me, Luke Skywalker. We got this and we got this. This is what we were using. This is more for, you know, actual plastic models and everything, which this is resin and not a plastic model. So we're most likely not going to use that again. What the hell just came onto my TV screen? Is this Foo Fighters? I feel like this is Foo Fighters. This is Foo Fighters. Yeah, okay. I do like Foo Fighters, but we're not trying to do that right now. We're going to actually go to Dantooine Jedi Academy ambiance because we need to focus. And I had zero to do with my Luke Skywalker comment. Um, it was just there. And I was like, all right. Let's zen, let's focus, and there you go. The little string finally finally snapped. All right. You get to watch some maintenance. They always say the best things never go as planned. It's a little much glue. Believe me, it'll bubble out, and I don't like it. And that's probably why it snapped off in the first place. It's probably why it was so easy to snap off. Oh, my God. The glue is going to be that much of a bitch, aren't you? Aren't you? You better not. You better fucking not. All right. That has bubbled out just a little bit. But well, we are going to have to avoid that gun and that hand for a little bit. So let us refocus our efforts now that we totally got derailed on the thought train on whatever the hell I was talking about, dude. Oh, I was talking about companions. So I did the little mention where I helped the, uh, the synth... Um, Detective. I wasn't expecting that. Also wasn't expecting him to look as busted as he was. <clears throat> so I... I don't have too much against him. I think his name is Nick Valentine or something like that. Um, I don't have too much against him. But I'm not the biggest fan of him. Not yet, at least. Uh, we'll see. But I have kept him as a companion 
so far, it's been working out. I don't know. I don't even know what level I am right now. But I do know that I wasn't exactly at a at a good enough level to to do um, to do the glowing sea. Yeah, but I did it anyway. Outran a bunch of the rad scorpions. And I mean, I literally just, all right, later, ran. I let them get absorbed with uh, my companion. I let them get uh, distracted. And then I booked it because I wasn't a high enough level to, to fight all of them like that. And man, they kept popping up. And then, of course, and then, of course, when I finally got to uh, the, 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 the super mutant doctor that I was after, a death claw showed up. Now I've, I've seen some of the memes. I've heard the horror stories on how terrifying death claws are. And let me tell you something. When I met the militia, I know I'm jumping stories here. When I met the militia, which who, by the way, I couldn't give two shits about. Uh, it's nothing against their writing. Yeah, I think they did a good job uh, with all the characters. Everybody feels pretty unique and uh, like they like they're a real character. They got some motives and everything. But I just don't give a shit about him or his little mission or the people like their little prophet that they have with them or whoever the hell some mystic lady. I was like, dude, lady, shut up, just shut up. Like, how the hell could you possibly know any of this? Uh, whatever. I don't know. I I prefer, in the Fallout universe at least, that I keep a little bit more of reality. Uh, like, psychic powers. Can we please not? I don't want it. Because they did a very good job so far of keeping uh, the world of Fallout more or less grounded in reality. More or less. You know, I, I really, really dug what they did with it. And I just wasn't trying to have too much sci-fi in there. I mean, the power armor alone, have you seen that thing? It's awesome. Well, what mission was I talking about? Right, right. I just, I stumbled upon them, which I'm pretty sure everybody did in their first playthrough. And that's, you know, the direction you go. Is I, I stumbled upon them and I'm helping them out and I get some power armor and I'm running. I'm down the street and I'm blasting some motherfuckers with my, with my like Gatling gun or mounted assault weapon that I snatched off of the post and was using, I'm blasting. So anyway, I was blasting. And fucking Deathclaw showed up, and I, oh my god, I died. I think, I think I died twice um, before I really realized how to manage. I, I finally got the hang of that, uh, that, that assault cannon that I was wielding and the power armor. I finally got the the hang of that and how how to burst fire with it. Uh, ammo conserving conservation. Little man, brain is having a hard time trying to focus and talk. All that fun stuff, just so I can save as much ammo as possible for when that fucking death claw showed up. Because when it did. I almost shit myself. I was like, oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. And it was fun. It was fun. You know what? We're gonna go with this. Uh, we're gonna do something real quick. Um, we're gonna use this moon dust. It is lighter than the demonic yellow that you're used to me using. As you can see, a real good uh, thing there. We'll even try the bottom so you can really see just how much of a difference it is. Um, basically, though, what we're going to do real quick is uh, I'm going to dry brush that over the base. 
We're going to try. I was trying to figure out something, and I think the barbarian flesh is too is too similar to the base. But this this yellow, like for some reason, the yellow was like, "Hey, try me, try me, try me for once, man. You never use me, man. I was trying to be all dramatic and shit, and just just just, just, just try me, man." Just, just give it a shot, man. Just drive me, man. So we're doing that. We are doing that. Sorry, that that don't that just about went on too long. Anywho, uh, so far I am, I am digging uh, Fallout. It's really cool. Part of me really, really wishes I had done. I had really started out with Fallout One, and just did it as best I could, you know, wait until the kids go to sleep and do something, just play it on the computer here, just ah, something, you know, I'm a sucker for starting at the beginning. I don't know when I, when I hit this with the null oil, I think it's going to come out well. I think it will turn out well for us. Uh, but anyway, yeah, his face, I don't think we're going to try to do too much more. It's because I just don't have much faith in my skill at the moment. Honestly, if we're if we're really, really going to be honest with you people, and I always try to be honest with you. So. We will try to do the eyebrows. All right, because those eyes are really, really small in there, and I don't think I want to try it. I might be able to hit it with a dot. I might. What is growth without trial and error, right? But, man, I swear. And if this one turns out well, I'm honestly not sure if I'm going to keep this or if I'm going to uh, post it on Etsy. I would say let me know what you think, but I, hell, by the time you, by the time you see this, I might have already made up my mind. Not too bad. And we're okay. We're okay. We're gonna leave it. I don't know if you could really see it, but we're we we got it. I got two white dots for the eyes. I am not going to try to do pupils because that's even smaller. It's, we ain't doing irises, pupils, any of that shit. We ain't doing it. We ain't doing it. So anyway, back to what I was saying. Right, so I really kind of wish that I had gotten a chance uh, to really play. Ah. Fuck it. Um... We need our busted brush for this, honestly, because that that other one that we were using, it was really starting to shred on us, wasn't it? That was stupid. But we need one of our angled busted brushes. And we're at 25 minutes already. We're closing in, but the model is just about done. Just about. So we're going to get some brown. Put it like that. And then, of course, we're going to use this. This is the trick that I've been trying to show some people and uh, talk about. Somebody somebody had asked me how how I was doing my edge highlighting. Um, I wanted to say it so well, but I, don't, I, don't, I, can't, I can't remember how flattering they were about it. And I told them, dude, what I do... Uh, they were they were talking about edge highlighting, and right now we're just kind of dry brushing. But either way, I told them what I do is exactly what you saw. I take, you know, I get it on my brush, and then I use my wrist. 
I don't use a paper towel. And that is to try to avoid how chalky dry brushing and even head, head highlighting can turn out. <clears throat> if you're not careful, that stuff will turn out pretty poorly. And then it's just embarrassing. I don't, I don't know how embarrassing you're going to feel or how embarrassed you're going to feel. But for me, when things come out chalky, especially in places they ain't supposed to be chalky, apologies, we're also shifting music. Music choice is going to be Roxy music, uh, Mother of Pearl, because I love that song. Shout out to uh, SLC Punk. Love that movie. Anyway, um, that is how I have been doing it, and it is, it's working for me, and I don't know if it'll work for you. But I want to say, if something ain't working for you, give it a try. Give give my method a try. Speaking of edge highlighting, we're not exactly doing edge highlighting here. We're trying to trying to be very careful because, as I mentioned in the first episode, I believe that there were these little seams, and I can't believe they got them to. Uh, they got them to, to to come out so very nicely on this model. And I'm just trying to pick it up. And it's it's a little challenging here. And I figure if this episode goes on a little long, that's okay. Because this is most likely our last venture with the Vault Dweller. If you got any ideas about future models, Space Marines, or hell, somebody somebody actually asked me if, uh, if I've if I've done an orc and I haven't, and that's because I can't find an orc model that I really, really like. And now I do really like some orc models out there, but I'm trying to find like a solo model and I just can't find one. Um, but anyway, uh, if you, if you would like to see me paint something, uh, it doesn't have to be space Marine. Uh, it doesn't even have to be Games Workshop at all if it's if it's Dungeons and Dragons or hell if you have an idea from Etsy, dude, send me the send me the link and I'll look at the model and I will I will honestly consider this. But uh, by all means, shoot me some ideas, drop a drop them in the comments, debate your ideas between each other. Do you think I'd do a good job with it? Um, Because you never know. You just never know. I, I'm trying to think of what the hell. Damn. Damn. That thing came out so blotchy. But good thing it's. Oh, fuck me. Fuck me. I was just saying. Good thing it's under the damn armpit. So you're not really seeing much. I'm trying to be so, so fucking careful here. And it, this white is really pissing me off. It's also with the brush, and I know I'm not thinning my paints. Everyone can piss off on that for a minute. God damn. And it's also caking on the brush. Oh, my God. Sometimes working with Corax White is a fucking nightmare. Ugh. know what I want to say you know what Corvus why don't you stick to the darker colors like your legion is used to leave white to somebody else okay just leave it to somebody else call it holy emperor white or some shit
I see the seam comes above the gold, which is annoying. Because that means I also have to paint that. Alright, we're good. Okay, that's all the white seam. Fuck you back there. I have to try to touch that up with the blue. Oh, we're definitely at 30 now. Good lord. And I don't like going past 30. The the 30 minute episodes can can be quite the pain in the ass when it comes to uploading. But like I said, I'm doing everything on my phone. And uh You know what? I'm going to throw a little a little hi how you doing to uh Somebody who works at the same place that I do. We're not in the same department. Uh, I think he is considered housekeeping, if not, you know, just part of the facilities management team. He knows who he is. We've had many a conversations about many a things, models, games, both tabletop and playable or digital, whatever, whatever, man. Uh, hey bud, how you doing? Uh, if you're not aware, I don't, I, I try not to say names on the internet <laughs> just cause it's like a little thing of mine to try to keep things, uh, uh, anonymous enough. I'm looking for a gray real quick. Bear with me guys. There it is. We're looking for Ash gray. Whereas we usually dry brush or edge highlight uh, any of our blacks with that mummy robe because it's a very bright contrast, but I ain't worried about doing that right now. And we're going to break our paint rules a little bit. I'm going to grab a slightly slimmer brush. Um, I'm going to choose gray because I feel like it might, it might just work a little better for this one. And not be so unbelievable, just too much of a contrast. I don't know. Mm -mm -mm. I even had like a, now that my mind was just briefly on, on work, I had a vulnerable moment at work where I actually asked one of my uh, superiors uh, how I, how I was doing. And I guess that's not exactly a quote unquote vulnerable thing. I usually don't give a shit what they think. Um, but it, as anyone usually knows when it comes to work, you don't hear much of any feedback. If you do, you're lucky. But you generally don't hear much of any kind of feedback. And when you do, it's it's not good. And I've had to explain that to some of the younger ones. Um, who are like, I, I don't know if I'm doing okay. Or whatnot, and I'm like, well, have you heard from them? No. Then you're doing right. You're doing okay. Trust me. If you weren't doing something right, they will let you know. They are more likely to let you know that than to ever let you know that you're doing something. Uh, doing something right. Sorry. They are more likely to let you know that you're fucking up rather than you're doing something right. That is the nature of the beast. As just in, in my experience, that's unfortunately how it goes. You will always hear bad news first, and you will rarely ever hear good news. So I usually had to check in with them and say, "Hey, how am I doing? Am I am I living up to your standards? Um, if not, tell me. Uh, do I need to lighten up? Do I need to be more friendly? Do I what, what do I need? What do I need?" And then I'll, I'll consider it based on some of my principles. I'll consider on what I need to do if it really needs, you know, adjusting or whatnot. If, if they think I would need to be more open 
with others at work, you know, so we can be more of a cohesive team, I would tell them, mm, you can kind of go fuck yourself on that because uh, these people are not my friends. They're my coworkers. So I'm going to keep a friendly distance. You know, there's no reason to be uncivil in anything like that. But I'm sure it's my way to try to open up and all this other stuff. So like watching stuff like uh like Parks and Rec or The Office and it always you know they they pull it off just so well. But I will compare it with friends, all right? So let's go with Parks and Rec. What are they doing when they're not working? They're usually hanging out with each other in some way, shape, or form. I mean, granted, they're usually always working. The show takes place during work hours and all that fun shit. Um, but same thing with the office. They go to their office parties, and they're usually going there to hang out or some kind of shit like that. And I'm like, what is going on? Because I would not, I would not do this. I'm not going to your company party. Uh, like Christmas party and any of that shit. I'd have to actually really like the people that I work with, which of course we all know that these people do. But I, even then, I'm not sure if I'm gonna fucking go to that. I'm really just not sure. Um, again, I think you'd have to be someone pretty damn special for me to go out of my way. For me to actually fucking come and try to mingle with you people. and No. I don't think so, dude. You're here. I see you almost more than I see my own fucking family. And to me, that sits wrong in my gut. Oh my god, we're almost at 40 minutes. So, as you can see, I've been BSing. Let me finish my thought first. So, you see all these people hanging out and they're... You never really see them hanging out with personal friends that are outside of work. But in Friends, the show, you see them hanging out with each other and never really hanging out with people from work. I always found that way more relatable and realistic. But now that I've, always, I've said all that, uh, I will finish up a couple of things off, uh, off, off camera. And you guys will see the final product in the turntable. Thank you guys so very much for stopping by. Uh, if you'd liked what you what you saw here and what you heard, please drop a like. It very much supports such a small channel like myself. Uh, check me out on Instagram, Pongo Paints. You can check me out on uh, Etsy. Uh, you will find plenty of miniatures there, even one or two from from YouTube. Uh, Pongo Paints Workshop. Uh, but please comment. Let's talk, dude. Uh, what did you like about the game? Did you have any recommendations for miniatures? Anything, dude. Even just answer one of my questions of, hey, how you doing? I love talking to you guys. I really do. But either way, I will see you guys on the next round. Please stay happy and healthy. And may the Void Father guide your brush. Later. Mm -hmm.